Radio.com is now online. Protoss versus Terran, such a good matchup. Um, you know, at the very highest levels, this is a matchup where um, both players should be trading bases and trading spots um, if they're both attacking perfectly and counterattacking perfectly, um, assuming that neither player is damaged early on. All right, and uh, as we said, this is a two-player map, so um, obviously the players know exactly um, where the other is. We just got an influx Whoa. of viewers. An army of people just walked um, in. I think we need more chairs. There's people standing in the sidelines and such watching. Yeah, it, the studio just became even more packed. Um, higher and higher. Sky high. I get it. Ha ha. Wow. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. That's a little bit early. Oh, okay, he's going to block that out. I was a little bit uh, wondering what the hell he was doing there. Um... Players block their ramp like this. Um, they absolutely do not want to let the other player see what's going on in their base. Now that means that the Terran will either do something very unusual, like a double ba uh, barracks rush, like we saw in that first game, or it means they're going to play standard and try to scare the Protoss into getting um, observers, defense, and stuff like that way too early. Well, you know, being that this is a two-player map, um, are there any standard, standard plays that a Protoss or Terran would do um, because they know the where their opponent app is from the beginning? Well, we do see um, at times um, proxy barracks, although it's much more likely to have a, a proxy one gateway or a proxy robo bay um, in order to get the Reavers in there pretty quickly. This is, uh, there's nothing really standard, though, for Protoss on, on a one-on-one -on -one map because... Um, there's usually a lot of things that the Protoss can do. Terran, um, it depends on whether or not the map has a small ramp, a large ramp, or no ramp at all. On no ramp at all maps, uh, two factories are a little bit stronger. Um, and on maps like this where we have a small ramp, we can usually expect to see um, fast dropship, although that's a bit risky, or normally just standard um, six marines tank uh, vulture. Protoss hasn't scouted yet. Creation Toss is going to go in the macro game. Okay, the barracks is done. Note that this is a pretty large entrance. Um, I guess that does wall in. Okay. This is the map I've gotten to play on the least, actually. But it looks like a really interesting map. He's going to put the factory up to the north. Only one SCV in the gas. Now, that does mean he is, in fact, going to go for a fast command center. A lot of good Terran players will put three um, SCVs on gas if the probe gets in and then take them off and uh, get that command center pretty quickly uh, just to fool the Protoss. Stark us a lot about mind games. You know, unlike Warcraft 3, this is a game where it's very difficult to scout your opponent and see everything you want to see. I mean, if you absolutely have to scout your opponent in Warcraft 3, you can usually just suicide a unit in there. But here, uh, Stark up the units are so fragile, uh, things die so quickly that intelligence and deception play a key role. Okay. Dragoon range is being upgraded. Very standard opener here for um, our Protoss player. He sees only one Marine. He's wondering if he's going to get the command center out a little bit sooner than normal. But that can also mean double factory. You can see he's, he's moving the Zealot around the edges of the wall and to see if he can spot anything. He sees that factory, but he can't see the command center from that angle, so he's still kind of in the dark. That's interesting that he placed that Marine there. I guess it's because the Zealot can't get get to him, right? Yeah, the, the Zealot cannot fit through the um, the wall in, and it just forces the Zealot to not sit there and attack the depot, which would ultimately force him to make a Marine, and then uh, force uh, him to take SCVs off of mining to repair that. Now, it looks like Protoss is going to go for the Dark Templar opener. Oh, man, he's getting, he's getting some guts, man. This Marine is pissed off. Leave my house alone. Get out my house! All right, there is an intense chase scene going on here right now. Some Tom and Jerry action here with this SCV in the Dragoon. If he's really got some guts, he'll lift and land right before the uh, Dragoon can get in there. Is he going to pull it off? Oh! Sorry, SCV. Oh, what? Oh, we got in. What? SCV was on a diet. Okay, 
You see the Temple Archives um, almost finished. It looks like he's going to do um, one GT, send that out, and follow that up immediately uh, with a Nexus. Actually, the Nexus just started as I said that. This is a pretty good build. You don't see it all the time, but it's actually a pretty uh, well-rounded build. You basically use the Dragoons to try to slow down the Terran from expanding. He's assuming that if the Terran's going to two-factory, he can wall off with the pylons and use the DT. Let me the pylon here, he'd make a gateway, another pylon and wall that off, and then he can use to defend. And if he's in a fast command center, he can use those two Dragoons to um, hold off this uh, attack. He's going to make the start gate right there, so he's not really worried about being spotted with what he's doing. He's going to go for fast arbiters along with the DT. Wouldn't normally um, the Protoss want to build his Stargate inside so you can see it? Yeah. Why, why is it that he doesn't... Well, I think because he, he, he doesn't know 100% of his opponent's two-factoring yet, so he needs to have an adequate wall in in case uh, he comes back and rushes with all this stuff. Plus, a lot of times, good players will see the warping and Stargate. If you make it in a really weird position like that, usually when they when you um, when you kill the SCV, a good player will probably be like, "Okay, there's no way he would make the Stargate there. He's probably going to cancel." Well, the Dark Templars out, but unfortunately, those dragoons weren't there to stall and take out turrets until the DT could get there in time. There's another Dark Templar. Now, what's good about getting a few Dark Templar as they're teching a fa uh, fast arbiters is the Terran has to scan those Dark Templars if you space them out right. He has to spend a lot of scans killing off those Dark Templars when he pushes, especially if he does an early push. And that means that you can pretty much uh, assume that you're going to have enough um, wasted scans that they won't be able to kill your actual army that's covered by the Arbiter. They won't be able to see it. And if we see a third factory like this, I think we can expect a pretty quick push. He's not going to let any more... Well, I guess he is going to let some more SCVs in here. But the idea was that he would not let any more SCV <laughs> scout in there. There's a turret underneath that barracks. And, um... Let's see here. The Arbiter is on the way. We see the Arbiter come out here. Um, we may see another Nexus, then a Robo. Uh, because he wants to get another expansion up in this meantime. And he gets observers pretty late here. As you can see, his opponent is contained here. Two Dark Templars, and then also three Dragoons and a Zealot at the location where SCVs are most likely to scout out. Oh, a Dark Templar joining that little party there, too. Yeah, he's going to join that party. And, um... For now, we got, what, four gateways um, from the Protoss. I expect another Nexus pretty soon here. Also, the Protoss is walling off this section here at the bottom right on the mini-map. Our observer hasn't gone there yet. There it is. Two more factories here. We are going to see the push probably when these two upgrades finish. You can see he's ready for drops. He's got a probe there just in case so he can spot it. A few more Dragoons move up here. And I assume the Arbiter should be done right about now. now do you think the uh, Terran player knows that he's going Arbiters? He should, um, but I don't know if he's revealed the DTs yet. But he's probably uh, he's probably got an idea. If he, if, otherwise, he would have gotten uh, Goliath a lot sooner and assumed a carrier rush. Two Templars out with Psy Storm and the Arbiter. Now, it's really important the timing push works out perfectly here. Now, there's, see, there's one DT here. Now, what he wants his opponent to do is scan with that first one, then scan with the other one and take out the other DT. And then by the time he actually moves out... Oh, block it off the vultures! One is out. Okay. Um, oh, well, he's going to get an Archon. That's unusual. I guess that makes sense, though. He doesn't really have a lot of Vespian gas if he's pumping Arbiters like this. Um, but, yeah, as I was saying, um, really uh, it's going to come down to whether or not Terran can preserve the scans correctly and whether or not Protoss knows how to retreat and attack, retreat and attack. Now, Terran has the bigger army, but um, Protoss is kind of scary right now with all these um, invisible units. 
We're going to see if it works. He's edging out now. And now remember, he should have stasis as well. I see this is a really smart move here. He runs out with the Zealot under the um, under the Arbiter to try to use that to get in the way of the tanks. Then Terran has to scan. Terran down one scan right now. Whoop. Excuse me. <laughs> Those Zavaltras collapse from exhaustion. Maybe try to glitch through there with the vultures. Meanwhile, probes are getting transferred over here. That expansion's pretty well defended, um, but uh, Protoss gonna have to do something about that in a little bit here. More gateways getting added up here. Protoss really entering the macro phase now. Is he gonna knock down that pylon? No, he's already blocked off with either a gateway or another pylon. Now, one thing about using that Archon like that is Archons don't set off mines, so... To kill off a few stray vultures, I mean, that can be pretty effective. I suppose that's the reason why he got that unit. Now remember, Protoss should have stasis or recall, but stasis would make more sense. And look at how Terran is clumping up his tanks like that. That could be a massive stasis. Terran scans again, Protoss backs up. And Terran is slowly leapfrogging forward. Very interesting game we're seeing here. Should he be splitting up those tanks, uh, knowing that this guy has Arbiters? I think so. I think I think it's a bit risky um, that he's actually clumping them together like that. I mean, two good um, stasis is that he could run that over. But at the same time, um, you can also see that the Protoss is very eager to force Terran to waste as many scans as possible, rushing forward with the Zealot. I know you guys probably think I'm saying that a lot, but that's what the entire strategy right now is surrounded with um, for the uh, for the Protoss. He's gonna move. He's gonna move out! One stasis, two stasis, but the really good stasis would have been farther back than that. I think that was a big mistake by Creation Toss. He wanted to, he could probably have gotten six had he gone to the back. No need to stasis these two in the front. Well, Terran's gonna be in good shape. Those units are gonna unstasis. And Terran should be able to push um, pretty strong here. With a few extra Goliaths in there, it's going to be harder and harder and harder to get in a good stasis without uh, actually using it on the Goliaths. And ideally, you want to use that on the tanks. Oh, man. Take a look at this. Look at what um, look at what Sky High got for Creation Toss. A tank push for Christmas. Okay. Uh-oh. Sorry, Archon. Okay, he's going to move out now. He's going to be able to get the expansion. I think right now Creation Toss is in a state of panic. He doesn't seem to have ever gotten observers here. This is bad. Oh, God. Well, he might be able to get in here and do some damage. But unfortunately, this push is going to take him out down here at the south. He will take out all these tanks. Um, however, he has to save that expansion. Terran uh, pumping heavily off of two bases. A huge minefield here. No observers. And we... Oh, man. He's losing a lot of units. What, only four Dragoons now? Sky High is going to win this. That's it. Sky High is winning. You can see Creation Toss is in a state of panic right now. He's not sure. He knows he has to do something. But what? What the hell can he do right now? Especially when he's in a position like this. Oh man, and this is going to be the end here. If he gets this up here and uh, Protoss can't deal with it, I don't see this game going anywhere but to a straight loss here. More creation toss. He's taking way too much damage from mines. He can't get good position on his opponent. You can see it's pretty tough to get those tanks back there. I guess we're going to see a stasis here. All right, he got one good stasis off here. Now he has to take these tanks out if this game's going to go on for any longer. By the way, another push coming down here. Not uh, far away. All right, it uh, looks like he's doing a pretty good job holding this initial push off. More vultures, though, are on the way down here, which is going to split up these zealots a bit more than he would have liked. Meanwhile, he's still doing a great job of holding off these uh, zealots and uh, dragoons down here. No scanning, though. No scanning down here at the bottom. Creation Toss is barely hanging on right now. Looks like those probes may finally be able to mine some more resources up here. But again, remember, uh, the Protoss really behind economically. If you look at the food count, they're even, which means the Terran is in fact ahead. Terran want to be 20 food 
Um, excuse me, the Pearls want to be 20 foot ahead in moments like this, and they're not. And uh, I think this push may be, um, may be the game and you move here. I think uh, to an extent, Creation Toss is dead, um, just not physically yet. Sky High is macroing pretty damn well here. And um, he's going to move in here. Three Arbiters, though. What he really needs is a Science Vessel to EMP those Arbiters. But the Arbiters uh, came out so early, it's a little bit tough uh, to get away with something like that. Now, three Stasises can really mess up the Terran. If it's three perfect Stasises, that can turn the entire game around. Now, however, though, like these vultures are all over the place. It doesn't look like um, Sue is able to do anything with his dragoons. I don't know. He's yeah, he's having a hard time uh, stopping this harassment. Oh, God, no, the vultures not. could have gotten in. No, he backs off. He's going to try to go for the uh, the probes over here. And um, Sky High actually uh, having a really tough time. Um, but, oh, God, maybe There's, he won't be in a little bit. No, it's a minefield and vultures and... Okay, he's gonna he's gonna leapfrog forward, and um, two arbiters are out now. He needs the perfect stasis. He needs the stasis. Dreams are made of that wasn't it right there. Two vultures and a Goliath. They're not gonna change them. The course of this game. He's leapfrogging. He's doing a hard push, but no turrets um, set up here. He's just focusing purely on making units. Maybe making an additional command center in his main to float somewhere. These guys are on strike over there. Okay, um, that should be that. I guess uh, Creation Toss wants to play this out for a little bit longer here. Do you think there's anything he can do right now to mm -hmm. redeem himself? No, I actually, I don't. I don't think there's anything he can do. Even if he were to sim held up this attack, he's losing Nexus too quickly. He's losing probes too quickly. He's going to try to come up here from behind. Oh, my God. Uh, a lot of vaults just come up here and clean that up. That's going to be it. GG! Well played. Sky High goes on to the final eight. Sky High, your winner. Sky damn High, good. the slayer of one Protoss. And nice to go. Creation Toss has been destroyed. He will create not um, anything anymore. <laughs> Get it? Okay, he's uh, yep, there so there's he our winner. There's our winner. Look at this. It's like we got a rave going on here. There's so many lights. I feel like I need glow sticks right now while I cast this game. You don't have glow sticks? Not on me. I left my lucky glow sticks at home. All right. I wonder if they're going to get to do a ceremony or anything else. Well, that was the idea. I remember before we started this, we were trying to get them to do ceremonies, but uh, looks like he did it. Oh, well, they, not, not all of them want to do that. Man, if I was a pro gamer, I'd be doing crazy ceremonies, man. It would be awesome. But uh, I am a caster. <laughs> so I can't do that. You can still do ceremonies. I could do ceremonies. Yeah, I could. But uh yeah, maybe I'll do that in the future. I think um that was a well that was a great series. We're gonna go on to the second half of today's games. Again, if you're just joining us, only two uh, rounds today. We don't have um enough players left to do the full four. We're not marathoning it anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're um, we're spreading it out. But, I mean, this is better for um, not just us, but it's good for you guys. Uh, keeps you in suspense. We will be having two games all the way to the end. And then when we get to the round of eight, no, I think when we get into the the semifinals, we'll just be having one set per day, um, you know, just to build up the anticipation, build up the suspense, and then we will have your winner sometime in February, I do believe. It should be pretty good. Just around time for Valentine's Day. Um, I think, uh, yeah. Really great games back there. I like how Sky High won one game with a very aggressive all-in maneuver, and then he won that final game with a very standard play. Um, I think it was really um, Creation Toss who was the you know a little bit crazy in that last game, um, doing that Arbiter Tech. But you know he just did not get the right stasis off in that initial attack. He mm -hmm. should have um, looked a little bit farther back. There was really no need for him to attack right there, anyways. I mean he did not have the high ground advantage, so. Ultimately, Sky High just outplayed him. Sky High made less errors, and uh, he deserves that win. He's going to go on to the final eight. Well done. He'll have at least a month uh, to prepare for that. Absolutely. And you know what? This actually does real like this does volumes for his career. Um, I mean, he's following some big footsteps in CJ Etnis, and this definitely has gained. Um, you know. This. Listen.